Hello. How are you doing this morning? Trust you're safe. Thanks for joining us on Off the Press on Plus TV Africa. My name is Felicity Ezewike. We just basically take a look at the headlines. And with the help today of IFI, we will be uh, talking about IFI Oji, actually, a policy analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. Hi, Felicity. Good morning. Good morning to you. Um, we will start with the punch, and uh, if you will be helping us uh, make sense of some of these headlines. The big screamer here is Buhari's team lands in Kanu as five more personalities die. Uh, we have three riders to that story, but you can see just two. Uh, Federal government reserves hotels for Dubai returnees in Lagos. President Trump speaking coronavirus, U.S. pledges ventilators. Suspected coronavirus patient dies in Ondo Hospital. Workers in fear. Just below it, uh, there is a picture on your screen now. Um, that picture shows scenes of the distribution of palliatives by non-governmental organization at Oshodi, uh, Lagos. Um, interestingly, a whole lot of Nigerians are coming out. I saw um, a group of them uh, yesterday as well, just distributing food randomly. Uh, we thank them uh, for that. Um, more stories for you. Uh, beneath that picture, gunmen kill driver, kidnapped friend in Undo. My begs banned journalist says feud not intentional. FG declares Friday public holiday for Workers' Day. 300 stranded Nigerians suffering from starvation in Guozhou. That's CLO speaking. Policemen assault nurse, motorcyclist at Undo checkpoint. Felony slashes political appointees pay by 50%. And at the top of the paper, we have eight part plants idle. Generation tumbles to 2,983 megawatts. You find details on page 24 of the paper. Of course, we have other stories. FD6, Jonathan Dizani's foreign accounts details. I have no foreign account, says ex-president. COVID-19, IMF OK's Nigeria's $3.4 billion emergency loan. Uh, two writers to that story. Senate OK's Buhari's request to borrow um, $850 billion locally. Germany grants... Um, federal government, 8.9 billion naira debt relief. Donates 2.2 billion naira. Okay, Ify, over to you. Which of these headlines would you want to get your cheat on? Uh, uh, let's look at um, basically the screamer, which talks about uh, um, President Buhari's uh, visit to Kano. Kano, as we know, has now become one of the, um, the uh, epicenter of uh, coronavirus based on the projections for uh, transmission or the projections for confirmed cases in the last couple of days. Uh, we know that based on, we know that it's the Ramadan has, uh, has, has begun and we know the sensitivity of religious uh, so social gatherings during this sort of sensitive time. So we, we, I, th I, I don't know if the, this is probably the right time for uh, the presidency to announce a relaxation of um, the measures for uh, pre preventing uh, COVID, uh, even though I know they have they have uncategorically stated that Kano, for example, is going to be on lockdown. It's just having that message co go across on a federal level may not necessarily give the right uh, impression in terms of how seriously we should be taking this uh, crisis that we are facing. Uh, the emergency loan from IMF to us, and uh, add that to the money um, requested by the president. What's your take on all of that? Felicity, that's an extremely important question. I, while, why I, while I am very uh, pro uh, monies that are being given to us, especially from IMF, I know we're also expecting uh, some monies from the World Bank and the African Development Bank as well. I am pro those kind of uh, uh, solutions because I know that at the end of the day, in, they, they will offer or they, they give the promise of stimulus packages. They give the promise of uh, better social welfare, especially for those that of the poorest of the poor. But my issue is that we, that Nigeria does not have a great track record in terms of disbursing those monies when they are most uh, needed. So I would urge 
all the international organizations and the uh, multilateral institutions that are giving us these monies, they have within those within those organizations they have specific point persons that are uh, that head these organizations, especially when it when when it, um, when it deals with social welfare and benefits and just how we are going to be able to uh, deal with these issues. So I would urge that. This issue, these monies be dispersed in accordance with whatever plans the government have, have presented to these organizations and multilateral institutions. And there should be a plan that should be followed. And they, they should have point persons for each of the from each of these departments. IMF has one, I think it's, it's headed by a guy called Mr. Mike Ratowski. And I know he deals especially with social benefits and finding a way to retain, uh, uh, to upskill uh, and, and make um, um, members of society more employable. So these are the things that I would urge um, the international organizations to also look at, so that it can be more or less integrated in terms of a solution for Nigeria long term for COVID. All right, um, before I miss slashing uh, um, salaries of um, uh, appointees by 50% uh, in continuous drive to help raise funds for uh, the fight against the pandemic, um, is that a good thing for you? And should that be replicated uh, across board, like a given, uh, not a question of choice for the appointees? Sorry, Felicity, could you repeat that, uh, that quote again? Okay, um, fire me slashes political appointees pay by 50%. I want to get your thoughts on it. Should it be a given going forward in the fight or um, are you not too happy with it? Well, I mean, this is again, this is just my personal opinion. I don't see where, where in any situation, in any circumstances, be it in the private sector or in the public sector, where we can retain employment. Retention of employment is actually, in terms of looking at it from a CADA perspective, retention of employment is the most important. And when and when you find that uh, employ, employability or, or sorry, rather, employ, employment cannot be retained, then those social welfare issues that are typically addressed as a palliative measures or for um, as stimulus packages for the informal sector should be should be looked at and addressed. So I feel that. Anyway, if, if you have to uh, reduce salaries, by all means, it's so long as it's, it's, it's spread across the board and more people are still retaining their jobs. I think that is actually, from a layman's perspective, that is probably the best solution you can have right now. All right, uh, let's go to the nation newspaper and see what is there. Uh, relaxation of lockdown, not end of COVID-19, says government. Um, three riders to that story. Pandemic virus still potent, dangerous. Two million Nigerians are target for tests. Troops drafted to secure isolation centers. Um, there is a picture of the latest update in figures. Nigeria is up to 1,532 persons. Um, that is a very huge rise by, uh, rise by all accounts. Uh, we have um, um, deaths at those recovered. Um, also on the front page of the nation, we have Reps SIG 36 billion naira special fund for states summon SGF NCDC. 150 non indigenous sent away by Rivers government. WK arrest five for violating lockdown rules. You find details on uh, page uh, six of the paper. And there are more stories for you. Under those uh, figures, you have uh, something on Oshu sent 30 samples for test. Fire me, deputy, others take pay court. Nasarawa index case begins uh, being shielded. That's uh, something. Um, curfew relaxed in Omaha, Abia State. Uh, there are others there for you as well. Let's go to the top of the paper. Uh, just above the masthead, um, there is one on the approval of the 3.4 billion dollars us emergency i mean uh, imf emergency loan to nigeria and then uh, government agencies clash over palliative rice that is an interesting one really if he Yes, let's hear you. Which of these uh, would you want to take on? But before we go to the serious okay. issues, let's talk about that pali that rice situation. Uh, this back yes. and forth between states and the federal government. Uh, the federal government on the one hand says, I mean, this was verified by NAFDAG, and then the states are saying, nah, something is wrong. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, I just feel like right now, every country in the world, this, the, what we are facing right now is more or less a war of attrition. War of attrition is basically a situation where you are wearing down just by corona, the coronavirus itself being a uh, uh, the, the enemy 
the global enemy, as, as you would say, right? We are finding ways to wear down our, our citizens, our individuals, and all our assets as a country. So it's not, it's not, it's 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 very interesting that you are, there's this tussle between the federal government and the state government. I know that more, but if we had a good network of being able to. Uh, to that, um, um, disperse these uh, assets or these, sorry, these uh, palliative, um, the palliative, uh, palliative uh, issue, um, sorry, palliative subjects, then we wouldn't have the problem that we're having right now. All right, let's look at the relaxation of lockdown, not end of COVID-19, says government. Uh, there's mixed reaction to the relaxation on the lockdown. What's your perspective on it? So I've listened to the, I've looked at it from a lot of different perspectives. I know a lot of uh, the analysts and a lot of people in the in the indus different industries have had so much to say in the last uh, 48 hours. I know, for example, Man, that's the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. They believe that the lockdown is and um, the relaxation is is necessary to sort of stimulate the economy and to make those choices that will not leave us at a negative uh, per capita growth by the end of the year. And you have other 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 um, organizations who are looking at it from a more holistic point of view they want to ensure that at the end of the day we have um we are we are alive we are, our human resource our human capital is comes before even our economy because at the end of the day every other country is going through the exact same thing so i think it's important for us to remember that after that announcement was made um, 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 in the last 48 hours we've had uh, a spike a growth rate in in on, of confirmed cases like we haven't seen before, you know, and even and, and this is is indicative of what is going to happen if this relaxation is long term. What would be a better suggestion is yes, all those measures that are, are, are going to be applied, from wearing the mask, from increased testing to two for two million people to be tested all of that is obviously very positive and very integrative but at the end of the day the lockdown is actually important to ensure that we are at the end of we don't see like a, a crisis where we are not able to provide the basic medical health health care that that uh, the, the rise in cases would actually uh, require so in, in a nutshell uh, felicity we need to sustain the lockdown and find ways of stimulating uh, small businesses and the informal sector so that the economy can still be moving, no matter how small um, the, those, uh, that progress is. All right, let's see what's on the business day. Uh, a lot of figures, uh, business day market monitor is captured on the front page. There you have it. And uh, just below it, there is a picture of social distancing and uh, the FCMB group on the front page. The big one, though, is the Nigeria Gets uh, Lifeline as AMF approves $3.4 billion loan request. Shelves planned external borrowing in 2020 budget. Senate approves 850 billion naira bond issuance for the federal government. We also have something on food crisis looms amid fear of coronavirus spread in the north. Further spike in food prices, that's something for you. And then inside uh, the paper, we have uh, FMDQ exchange admits United Capital, Sterling Bank commercial paper notes to its uh, platform. Uh, you find details of that on page uh, 30 of the paper. If you let's take this one, we've talked about the uh, lifeline for Nigeria, that's the $3.4 billion. Let's look at the issue of food crisis, looming I mean fear of uh, coronavirus spread um, in the north. Uh, we do know that um, Kanu is in the spotlight at the moment. What, what do you make of this um, uh, prediction that there is going to be food crisis? I mean, I don't see how that cannot be the case because of that particular state agricultural sector has been hit in, even even though it has been a minimal impact compared to other sectors such as uh, obviously the airlines and uh, uh, retail in general but um, you find that even when you have to talk about um, uh, food and and and, 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 the money, and generation of food and food stuff you find out that those sort of those sort of issues haven't probably be addressed because nobody else is no, nobody's in the farms. Nobody's you know nobody's producing this. Nobody's farming. So ultimately, at the end of the day, even even within a six month cycle or one year cycle or biennial crop cycle, these foods the the, the production level will have dropped, and that is what uh, that is what is going to inform the scarcity and obviously the the uh, artificial dem the, the the real demand. Sorry, for these uh, items and obviously that would increase the prices of uh, the produce of produce generally. 
All right. Um, let's uh, thank you now for your time with us. We'll wrap things up um, for the newspaper review. Thank you so much, Ify, for your time. Thank you so much, Felicity. Have a nice day. And that's a wrap on the program this morning. More headlines for you here on Plus TV Africa News. Do stay tuned and go read in depth so uh, you know what's really happening. My name is Felicity Ezewike.